do a couple more. You want to do this Chick Fil A thing? So, I read this. I read this blog post or this article that the Chick Fil A tech team put out. And um, if I'm not the biggest Chick Fil A customer, I'm top five easily in the country. So uh, you know, so anything Chick Fil A, I'm going to read. And what they were talking about was like Chick Fil A using AI, machine learning, blah blah blah. And I was like, oh, let me see what this is. Some bullshit. And I started reading it. It was actually pretty interesting. First of all, 90% of it was just over my head. But I thought it was pretty fascinating. What they were saying, well, first two things. They kind of like, they put their stake in the ground, which I appreciate. They go, Chick-fil-A is, you know, a restaurant that's sort of different than others. We're only open six days a week, but we do more sales than people that are open seven days a week. It's and a I was like, thing to say. I was like, baller, like strive to be Chick-fil-A. You know, like I want to be the Chick-fil-A. I want to work less and make more. Uh, than somebody who's working more, and the, the other, you know, the other thing I thought about was like a lot of people hate Chick Fil A because they're like kind of like overly Christian and like have like they're like anti gay marriage and stuff like that. Um, and I'm like, ah, oh, that sucks. But like this chicken is so good, I'm gonna eat here. I, you know, like the chicken wins in the well, end. What I would always say it's like, I can like R. Kelly's voice, but not like him. <laughs> like I can admit that right. I believe I can fly is like a banger and also right. say he's a horrible human being. Also, you're not invited to my daughter's birthday party. Yeah. Like I can do both. <laughs> it is possible to do both. And so with Chick-fil-A, it's like, I want to stuff my mouth with chicken and then be like, you guys, you guys are wrong. You know, like that's how I want to be. So anyways, I'm, I'm like, you want to be like Chick-fil-A, a product so good that you can actually be batshit crazy or even offensive. And still the person who disagrees with you, they need your product. It's that good. It's must have. So then they were talking about their tech and they were like, well, our stores, when we designed them, we thought they were only going to handle like, let's say, just for simplicity's sake, 100 orders, 100 customers a day or whatever. But the actual usage, the demand is so high for Chick-fil-A that we get three times more output than the store was designed for. And he's like, so how do we do that? Right? Once you design the store, it's kind of, it's already built. You can't really go back and change it. So we've had to use technology to get 3x the output that the thing was designed to do. He goes, so the first thing we tried to do was, can we like predict demand better, right? So if you want to pump orders out faster, instead of waiting till after the order happens, I should, I should just say, hey, there's always a lunch rush at noon. So I'm going to throw a bunch of fries in and I'm just going to know that I get this much demand. He goes, but the problem is there's too many variables. You know, a soccer game ends nearby. You get a rush of customers. The weather changes and th that causes a dip in customers. Um, you know, there's too much traffic on the highway that causes a dip. So it's too unpredictable. You can't just say Fridays at noon are always going to have this much demand, um, too many external variables. But he goes, so what we did do instead was we put like hundreds of sensors inside of a store so that in real time, I'm basically taking the, you know, like the order as the person's typing it into the, to the machine. And that's, that's, uh, being matched with a sensor that tells us how active the fry machine is. And then it gives a signal to the worker to basically like, hey, dude, put more fries in. There's going to be more demand or whatever, right? Like they're taking all these signals and how many people are in the drive through times this, times that, and basically making predictions of what do they need to make so that they can get that extra 20% of orders done per hour for throughput. And so I thought this was kind of interesting and I don't even fully understand the model. And I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like, um, What's like, it's not like mansplaining. I'm like dumb splaining. Like the thing I just said is not actually what they do, but it's the essence of what they do, uh, which is they take a whole, they have a hundred cent, hundred like sort of smart devices well, in their like store. that's kind of like what this whole podcast is, is we just said dumb like, splaining. oh, <laughs> they just, they just, it just, it just bump boxes. All they do is they just sell shit that like, I mean, need. that's all right. probably they're not like expert at Facebook ads or experts at like deal making right. for like supply chain stuff. I mean, they just do that. Right. <laughs> so so the point is there's like a hundred smart devices in a Chick-fil-A that are feeding into a machine learning algorithm to put something out there so that a frontline worker who makes, I don't know, $16 an hour is able to be more effective and they're able to get more source, more sales per square foot. And so I started thinking like, first of all, I had no idea that like kind of old school companies like Chick-fil-A are that deep into like adding technology into their stores and their services. And it made me think two, for, of two ideas. The first is those people should spin, the engineers working on that should spin out of Chick-fil-A and then go offer this as a service to every other restaurant. It's basically like, hey, Chick-fil-A spent $50 million over the last five years developing the technology to make their store smarter. Um, so we generalized it and it's a product for you, right? That's my, my old export framework. They should export this idea from Chick-fil-A 
and make it available to any, any restaurant chain. Um, so that's like the first idea. The second idea is, what are the companies that are like McKinsey or like a consulting company? Because I assume Chick-fil-A, when they go out in the job market, they're trying to hire machine learning and AI engineers. I bet they're finding it pretty hard to compete with like Google and Facebook and OpenAI and all these other companies. Like who, what, what great engineer is going to work for Chick-fil-A, right? Like, I think you'd be surprised. Um, you know who, who crushed it with um, tech stuff or relatively speaking was Walmart. Um, Walmart right. had this amazing thing called the Walmart Innovation Lab in Silicon Valley. Yep, it was pretty sick. And I went to um, I was reading the other day about the mo- most beloved brands amongst young people, and it's like uh, Target. What was, it's like Vans, <laughs> Starbucks, uh, one other one, and like the number one most loved brand is Chick Fil A. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I think, maybe I some think people, probably, maybe some I think Stanford probably graduate is going to work for Chick-fil-A and it, they're cutting against the grain. But I think most people are going to go towards more traditional brands, which really told me the way most companies are going to solve this is not by having as much in-house tech talent as consultants that basically take good tech talent, but like hyper tra- hypercharge them to get them to go faster. And so I'm curious, I bet this exists, but I'm curious who's building like a McKinsey type of company, like a badass consulting company that is only tech consulting. It's hardcore engineer it's engineering specifically around like the new age stuff of machine learning and ai and i think that you could build a new mckenzie deloitte pwc that is basically when your company needs t- tech when your company needs tech answers you basically hire this high price consulting firm that comes in and these guys are not suits that are great talkers these are and make great pitch decks. These are engineers who come in and they actually build uh, and they teach your team how to build and they build themselves. What do you know that venture or all these guys offer that you think? They do offer it, but I think their brand is not branded as this. And so right. I think there's an opportunity to come in and say, we dress differently. We talk differently. We don't even do, we don't have these 10 other offerings that McKinsey has. We are actually the best. If you really want to hire the best when it comes to engineering, you know, all of our guys are straight out of Facebook, Google, Stanford, Harvard. Uh, that's our crew. And these everybody's got a computer science degree. You know, this is our CEO. Look, he's a nerd. He's got Cheeto dust on his shirt. Like, that's who you're dealing with here. Um, whereas today, I know that McKinsey and others are like offering, offering these as part of their services. And in, in addition to like tax planning and like 10 other things that they're going to do, you know, like financial audits and like other shit. So I think there's an opportunity to create like a big four type of consulting company if you just went all in on engineers. I'm on I, I'm on board. I think it's cool. I, I think that any engineer who's smart though would never want to start this business because that would be hard as fuck. But I do think that um, there's so many cool things that started as agencies that eventually they create their own software and it becomes badass. So for example, I do think it would be cool to do this for five, 10 years, and then eventually just make the software and you could become, it it would be a really easy way, or not easy, straightforward way to have a bootstrap software company. So have you?